Hi everyone, um, my name is Kevin and I'm usually the guy behind the mic and the camera. So today, I'm gonna be asking questions and everyone knows Steve, so go. But I'm gonna ask uh, questions to Courtney. And one of the questions is that we're gonna go to Buckhorn and what I'd like to know is what, who is sponsoring it? What, what is it, what, what group is that? We work with an organization called Mission Sur. Mission Sur has been around 20 years. We're celebrating the 20th anniversary this year. Uh, it was founded to help with uh, sub, sub, uh, sub housing in areas where people were unable to afford putting a roof on their house or building a deck. And they've expanded out into doing all kinds of ministries. Uh, they travel all over the Southeast United States. They also go to Puerto Rico as well as Guatemala. So it's a real privilege for us to be able to work alongside Mission Serve. I, I noticed we in the past, this church has gone th with Mission Serve to Louisiana, to Dallas, to Savannah, to even to Canada. But in the last eight years, we've gone to Buckhorn. And my question, and I'm gonna be more important, what makes Buckhorn so special? Why do we go back to them? Well, year after year, where in the past we decided to go. Yeah, I think um, every year we go to Buckhorn, we leave our heart in Buckhorn. And it is because there is a community aspect to Buckhorn that you don't get at a lot of other projects. So we work um, with some boys that are on the autism spectrum. We also work with women and men that are in recovery. So there is a really personal um, aspect to this project of just being able to love on some people and really wanting to bring them home with us yeah. um, that makes yeah. us want to keep going back <laughs> so and I've, um, so in the past eight years I've, I've noticed that there's been changes so Steve can you kind of expand on what when we first went there what it was like what was what were the programs and now there eight years ago and tuned was involved to now and what has stayed the same <clears throat> well, the construction aspect of it has stayed the same. Um, the, the campus has needs. We've put a roof almost on every building on the campuses. Mm -hmm. uh, the campuses are one in uh, at Desi Scott campus down in Pine Ridge, and then there's the Buckhorn campus in Buckhorn, Kentucky. And so we're working in, in both those campuses. Uh, the programs have changed with the needs of the people. At one time, we used to work with girls at risk. Uh, that program closed out, and we've gone into recovery kind of programs for adults. Uh, the goal is to one day have a recovery program where you could have mom in one program, dad in a program, and a child in another program, uh, keeping the family together as they deal with recovery. Okay. And Courtney, you worked with the autistic kids, the boys, mm -hmm. in the past for the last eight years. I was, can you point to one special moment is, it actually stands out in the past eight years? You or, know, there's are so there several moments I know, that you there's can do? So, there's so many. I could probably tell a story about every boy that we've met. Um, <coughs> but there was... And I think we've shared this story before. There was a, a time when we had one of the boys pray in the worship service. And one of the things that he prayed was that God would help keep the monsters away. Um, and that he would protect everyone at the project as well as him. Um, each one of those kids come with a backstory where they just desperately need to be loved and need to be cared for. Um, and for a week, at least while we're there, mm -hmm. they feel seen. Um, they feel like they have family and they know that we're coming back every year so they know that they're not going to be left alone um, so to hear are the church people here every time we get there um, to me is the reason that we go and that happens every single time that we're I was going to ask you the same thing Steve what was the one moment or one event that you kind of stands out I remember uh, for me it was a young man that uh, well, it was two young men one of them uh, not very verbal and I remember him uh, having a little bit of a meltdown and uh, I was going down the stairs away from the cafeteria where he was and I heard him call my name, Pastor Steve. And that was the first time that he had, he had spoken my name and I kind of froze in moment there and realized we're, we're doing some neat stuff. And then I have another buddy there named Caden and Caden's just my buddy. And uh, Caden comes from a, like, like Courtney said, there's a backstory there and it's not a, mm -hmm. a very pleasant story, but Caden always looks forward to us coming in and I always look forward to, to Caden playing with the church people, eating with the church people, singing with the church people. He just, uh, <laughs> yeah. he think, just loves the church I people. I think that's probably that's one it. of our other favorite moments is letting the boys be on stage yeah. and have their moment where the whole group whole of group participants is, is staring at them. But like, that's one of the hardest questions I think I've ever been asked because I could tell a story about every single boy that we've ever met. But, awesome. Um, well, may I ask, uh, and this is both, both y'all, in, in the area of the, that Eastern Kentucky, Appalachia, there's a great need for a lot of stuff. And you notice that with 
with the boys and now with the recovery and you're starting to work with the more with the recovery side just recently mm-hmm. what do you see the, the community needs are that that fits in with bu- the buckhorn family services how they fit with that well buckhorn family uh children and family focuses upon children so the the first thing is to meet the needs of children in the area so we have a foster care program there uh, we also do counseling and those kinds of things but we're finding out that in eastern kentucky there's a there's a, a, a real motivation for recovery. There's a real need for recovery. Uh, there are folks there that are um, uh, dealing with alcohol, dealing with drugs. Uh, meth meth is, is kind of heavy in that area also. And so uh, we're finding out that we can do recovery. The problem is being able to do recovery for long term. Um, we, we really need eight to 12 months to do a re- good recovery program and most insurance companies Enjoy. will only pay for like a month and a half. But uh, we have some really good success stories. We have a good, a really good results. Uh, we're seeing people that complete our program be successful. And uh, we're just now expanding into, uh, into stable recovery. We have a young man that's going to be bringing horses onto campus, and he's going to be teaching men as they're recovering how they can, uh, how they can be plugged into the horse uh, industry there in Kentucky. And we're excited about that. That way we can go through... Uh, getting somebody dried out and then moving them into a middle range and then into long-term care and I think that's going to be a great thing cool. for us. I also noticed we did some stuff in the past that like labor of love and we did one Christmas. Would you be willing both to, exp- to do those again or maybe expand to something else? I, just, uh, I think we could do 50,000 different things. I don't think you could keep us away. Whatever whatever they need, um, the staff there knows. I get calls from them often about things that they need or activities that they want to do, and our church is so yeah. good to, to be supportive and of them. I would also like to let you know, I would like to ask you a question. So people wondering what gives you the... Um, what makes you qualify for doing this? So can you give me a little bit of background <laughs> sure. of your story? Um, um, you know. Yeah, sure. I can give some background. Um, I, when I was in college, I got hooked up with a family that I was nannying for. Um, all four of the children in that family had disabilities, and their mom just fostered me and helped me um, learn what it was to work with people who have disabilities. From that, I got certified in special ed, and I taught special ed for five years. Um, I've been teaching now for 14 years. I do um, inclusion classes, and autism is just, it's, it's really where my heart is. Right, so you're not just some yeah, I'm not random just like person. Bring, that can, it. You know, <laughs> so you have a background in that, and you're actually doing it. That's great. So, I mean, that's going to make this, wrap this up. So if people out there can really think about going to buckhorn.org, and maybe contribute and I will give you I will put this in the video of the link to buckhorn.org also does let you know and we're more than just connected Steve is also on the board of the of the of the family challenge so we're actually when we say we're a partnership we really are a partnership with them so we're more than just hey we're gonna go somewhere and go for a weekend oh, we're gonna fly back home and that's the end of that no we're there for long term. And, and I would yeah. say that if you're really, really interested, you can also go to mission serve.com and you can yeah, find out an awful lot about Mission Serve Organization and how they how they go. You could come to Buckhorn if you wanted to, or you could go to another project somewhere else. Oh, great, guys. I appreciate your time, and hopefully, it will make an impact in, in, in the next week. And I'm looking forward to see y'all up there. And by the way, we'll be doing more interviews for everybody. And we're also going to be interviewing the staff and some of the people in recovery. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.